Okay, everyone. Uh, so this panel is in English. You are lucky enough to have uh, guests all the way from the US, from Germany, from Belgium, as well as from France. Um, so I'm Pierre Lorenzo. I will be the moderator for this panel. Um, with me, we have uh, Claudette Suska coming all the way from Washington, from PR3. Uh, she'll explain in a few minutes uh, what is PR3 about. Uh, we have Andre, um, Andre Pitzke, if I'm not damaging too much your name, pretty much the deputy chairman of the German Association for Reuse, or a German NGO for Reuse. Uh, don't ask me to pronounce the full name, but you can explain what they do. Um, uh, oh, sorry. We have Laureen Grandet from uh, the senior manager in charge of uh, the Reuse Initiative and project manager at CTO. Um, and last but not least, Matthias from Belgium, very focused on uh, the European norms. Um, and, uh, and he's from ECOS. Uh, ECOS stands for Environmental Coalition on Standards. So if you want massive usage, obviously standard is the critical world. How to achieve standards? Why do they matter? Um, what is getting in the way to not have better standards? So we'll explore those topics. But before that, maybe if each of you can explain what your organization has been building. And Claudette, since you come all the way from Washington, you get the first shot. Claudette. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, hi, I'm Claudette Jessica. I'm from an organization called PR3. Maybe, maybe on, on your chin. And, um, and we're the Global Alliance to Advance Reuse. And one of the primary ways we're trying to advance reuse is by writing standards for the industry to follow so that reuse systems can be interoperable. We have um, global participation from companies all over the world, um, large companies like Nestle, Unilever, Colgate, or Clorox, Mars, all participate in our standards development uh, process, as well as small companies from all over the world, as well as um, uh, public interest groups, environmental health groups, social justice groups, trying to help establish uh, these new systems. And um, the one other thing I'll say is we have a suite of standards. They're in draft format. We have a very uh, collaborative process to finalize our standards. And they cover the whole reuse system because um, the point of the standards is to make reuse systems interoperable so that they can have an easier time scaling. Um, so that's an overview. Interoperable. We'll come back to this world. This is critical. Andre? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah um, I'm the deputy chairman of the Wii Association of Germany called Mehrweg Verband Deutschland. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's kind of the um, uh, Réseau Vrac et Réemplant de Germany. And uh, we're founded only two years ago. Uh, yeah, which is a funny thing because uh, in Germany we have a big tradition uh, of Wii U systems been running for decades. Now the beverage industry has a billions of containers being used and reused and reused again and again uh, for a long time. And uh, yeah, but um, the last years uh, there were a lot of organizations uh, searching for um, like collaboration about how to implement systems that are not running right now besides the beverage industry. And uh, we started to collaborate with uh, a, like 100 people in a we use community. And afterwards, um, like like after collaboration about okay, or oh, just exchanging information about how that all is running, like the yogurt jars being reused in a different way than before, and uh, implementing systems um, yeah, that that are not been like published yet on the e-commerce side or something. Um, we formalized the process of uh, like having this community uh, in order to um, yeah, also be um, in a political wise scene yeah, and have a collaborative space really to develop standards also uh, and the, the way to implement the system itself. So we founded it two years ago with 30 companies uh, being the founding members. And by now, it's uh, around 85 uh, that we are already. And we're good growth, good yeah, growth. Yeah, it is, yes. And, and um, are well connected with the we use parts that are in, in place since the decades uh, before then, the beverage industry, and uh, are working on how to really exchange everything that's needed to, to uh, take the, the new systems and everything that's on, in the running systems in place in an ecological and efficient way uh, to, uh, yeah, to unravel everything that's, that's rebelled here. Thank you. Laureen, do you want to introduce uh, CTO? And, and mostly, I think people know CTO, but the reuse part of CTO, which you embody? 
Yes, uh, so for, for those who may not know, CTO is an EPR organism uh, that is approved by public authorities for uh, all the activity around the household packagings and most recently on the Horeca pack packagings too. And so, um, as, you, as you may know, the legal framework for reuse is uh, more and more intense in France. And so our activities also uh, are growing. Um, so there is figured objectives for industrials to reach uh, for, for reuse. And so we have also means that are written in the law to assist them. So we have uh, um, an obligation of financing. You have... You had more, uh, multiple masterclass uh, today and yesterday about that, so I won't go deeper into that. And another one, which is more operational, uh, which is to define a range of standardized packaging for reuse for three targeted sectors, beverage, fresh products, and catering. Uh, catering is more about uh, delivery and takeaway uh, packaging. Um, and yes, so we are, we are leading this project for uh, three years now. Um, by uh, consulting uh, different uh, stakeholders, by, by doing workshops, by um, working with a technical, uh, technical supplier as laboratories or packaging suppliers. Um, and yes, we, we are quite advanced on the first packaging, which are uh, bottle uh, and uh, jar in glass, uh, which are currently in a prototype trials. Um, and that we hope uh, could, be, uh, could be on the market this year. Um, and yes, in parallel of that, there is different standard. There is a standard about packaging, but also in the reuse system, because there is uh, also uh, all the consumer uh, experience. There is also all the washing process. You have different step of the loop that have to be standardized. So we work in that in parallel with a big project called Reuse. Uh, it's not really an original name, but <laughs> still, it's a, it's a project. Um, and yes, we are working in both uh, in parallel. And so we, we, had a, we will have an experiment in the northwest part of France on, uh, on food and uh, in uh, retail uh, at the end of, of the year. Also. Thank you. And last but not least, Matthias Falkenberg from ECOS. Do you want to say from Brussels, what's the perspective? And I, I get norms and, and regulation is part of the mix. Exactly, yes. Um, chin. Do you hear me? On the chin. We are sitting in Brussels, our headquarters are in Brussels, but we're an international NGO. We have an office in uh, Kenya since last year. And uh, our goal is to shape policies, uh, regulation and standards, and to really look at all the pieces of the puzzle. Um, in the European standardization system, we have a bit of a privileged system in that uh, the European standardization policy uh, foresees that certain stakeholders that were underrepresented in uh, the European standardization bodies like SEN, Senelec, uh, they should have a voice uh, and our uh, task is to represent the environmental voice in the standardization processes. Um, we have been following the packaging, the EU packaging reform together with an alliance called the Rethink Plastic Alliance. Um, and we will be working um, on um, the implementation of the policy objectives that were decided just, just this spring. Certain standards will be, or the commission will request a number of standards to the standardization bodies. And we will be around the table making sure that these standards actually do fulfill the need to achieve the policy objectives. And, and maybe one question for everyone. Um, standards are critical. Uh, everyone can assume that, but can you explain clearly in just one or two sentences why I stand critical and why the importance of interoperability? Do you want to start with the importance of uh, standards? And, and then we can get to how to get there. What stands in the way? Yeah, yeah I think the, the most important thing I would say as an example of standards, I'm trying to get my phone out. So I'm from, as he said, I'm from America, and as soon as I landed here in Paris, I turned on my phone and I was able to call my family back home. And the reason for this is because of standards, because all the companies that make our cell phones agreed to a certain set of standards that make our, our system interoperable. And the same is true for global trade. If you look at the things in this room that came from overseas, the reason they got here efficiently is because we've standardized shipping containers and all the infrastructure that moves those containers around. 
So this is how industry works. When industry needs to scale, they write standards and follow standards, and it's critical that the reuse industry does the same. If we, if we want reuse to scale globally and largely to be the default kind of packaging in the world, then it's going to require standards that align and make our systems interoperable so all companies can, um, can integrate into the same infrastructure. Do you want to give your say on the importance of standardization? For reuse or? For reuse and packaging. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, we jump right into the discussion then. Yeah? Uh, standardization for reuse is like the necessity that it it's, it's needs to be a hit uh, in order to take place and to order to get a system running. Uh, we, we see that uh, as a specific problem with the uh, we treadable um, uh, cups that we have uh, in the to-go sector. Uh, the big issue is that it's not retreadable anywhere, and it, that, so it's not able to be given back. That's, that's a big thing in Germany in the last year. We had the with the law that enforced all the Horeca to take them back in a way, or offer them, and but the take back was not processed. So there was no standard of a cup that was stackable that is able to be given back in a good way. So it's not. Like taking place in a big way, then it's not easy. On the other hand, uh, the other uh, point is um, you you don't need to uh, like standardize the specific uh, container. You just need to standard the process that are behind us. If you talk about reuse, because the the containers itself they can be different, but if they are all be able to be handled in the same way, collected in the same way, maybe even a wash in the same way or the same facility or the organizations doing it know how to do that, then the system itself can work in a proper way and can be efficient enough in order to really like empower the whole system itself and scale it up as we all want and wish. Yes, and, and, and I would complete with, uh, with the necessity also to have like standardized container because in all the logistics and the operations, um, what we see when we talk, for instance, for our neighbors in, in Germany, every new references, every different references is a complexity in the logistic uh, loop uh, because you have to sort that specific uh, reference. So yes, for, for us, it's really like the, the mean that will uh, allow us to achieve the objectives in France because it allows to have like a better um, economic model and, uh, and to be more optimized also for the environmental impact. So both can be... So reduce, reduce complexity reduce system costs, uh, allow interoperability, and Matthias, what else? Uh, Why is it critical? Yeah, for us, for us, the most important oh, is on that... On your chin, on your chin. For us, for us another important uh, factor is that standards do um, influence environmental performance of products. Um, you need, uh, the EU will never set technical specifications at, at or ha rarely sets technical specifications. They want to achieve a certain political goal and then say that, okay, these standards to, to test whether the, our political objectives have been fulfilled, they can be set by the industry. So it's really important that we are there. We, are, we, we push for real life uh, testing. Take, for instance, the durability of a washing machine. How do you test that? Um, how do you test whether the washing machine will last you for eight years or for 12 years? Those things are typically part of a standard. Uh, we want to do the same thing in, in reusable standards. We want to make sure that we push the industry, that we, that we, that we help the industry to, to, um, to, to be mainstreamed. But at the same time, we want to make sure that it's really get, uh, uh, getting, that it's, that it's really right, that, it's, that the environmental performance of reuse systems is maximized, that reusable packaging is really reused. So, so if standards are critical, and we know why now, uh, and they're critical also to achieve um, a massive scale. Uh, so what gets in the way? Why are your organization so recent? Um, and, and how can you solve the different challenges? Can you name a few challenges? And maybe in the room, if you can provide help on solving those challenges, please feel free to raise your hand at the end or meet uh, the, the, the panelists. There's one interesting thing, like two and a half years ago now, when we founded the, or when we were in the progress uh, process, we started the process of founding the Mehrwegverband, uh, the Reuse Association. Uh, one big goal to achieve right from the beginning on, especially from the Reuse system providers that were coming up there and being starting, uh, uh, was 
to like set the standards together in order to achieve like big systems that can be scaled up and easily used also by retailers and other stakeholders involved. And since now, we didn't manage to set any standard with the association. And why didn't we do this? <laughs> because on the way, it's still a big issue to understand where standardization needs to take place and what exactly is the part we need to standardize. And we came up with, okay, the, the cups itself, where we came up with every aspect of the, the, the whole cycle of it. And we started doing it, putting stakeholders together and have the discussions. But it's still the point that the processes itself, which are like not visible, yeah, they are not touchable, it's not that easy. And they are unseen also at the retailers, yeah, because they are implemented in their processes that are focused on single use right now. And efficient as fuck, sorry. And to set standards that really meet the, the necessities uh, for a real system, that's the, the goal to achieve and to really to find these spots. And one spot may be like the way deposit is handled uh, and implemented and uh, also like taxed and all that stuff in a good way so that it's easy for every retailer to interchange in between, uh, to have it easy to interchange uh, deposit from one retailer and one stock to the other. This is one example for, for the process itself to in, that's needed to be standardized. But the system providers itself, the retailers, the users as the producers, uh, or anyone who can like be part in the real system, uh, they need to figure out where these spots really are and then start the process. Yeah? And it often happens the other way around. We start standardization before the actual model is on the, on the, on the ground. Yeah? And that's a big issue. So you have to think systemically. You have to look for every step of the process and what can, can, can block uh, the reusability or the interoperability. Yes, uh, I, I would say that yes, the main challenge when you want to set standards is like, yes, to make everyone agree on one solution. Getting agreement, building <laughs> coalition. Yes, it's, uh, it's quite a hot topic. And what Claudette said was uh, interesting that when you can't, because sometimes you can't at least think about the interoperability between uh, two different uh, options. I would say the first and the second one is maybe the duality between the fact that you, you have to set standards, um, the fact that maybe it's something that you can be iterative, like you, okay, you set someone, you try, you test and learn, and um, in parallel of that, there is all the industrial modifications that have to be done. I'm thinking about industrial lines, or maybe all the system, the logic system that have to be have to be defined and have to be changed, and this is like more long term, long term issue. So yes, the duality between the test and learn aspect and also the fact that it's big modification sometimes and it have to be implemented and it can take time. And, and Claudette, what's your take there? And I, I would assume if you have the big client at the end of the food chain, like the retailer, it does help a lot. And you focus your efforts on uh, voluntarily standards. So help us how uh, you, you get there with just goodwill. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with everything everyone said that it's, you know, it's complicated and it takes a lot of time and attention and then it's very hard to get consensus as well. So, and the, a lot of these reuse companies, they're young, they're new entrepreneurs and there's, they don't have a lot of time to contribute to this, which is part of the problem as well. Um, but when you have, in our process, um, our standards are voluntary, although we're accredited, um, by the American National Standards Institute. We have a partnership with the Canadian um, Standards Association. We also are working with other standards bodies around the world, including um, a standards development organization in China. And so while our standards are voluntary now, they're, gonna, they're becoming regulatory in certain jurisdictions. Um, and, uh, and the good thing about standards, unlike regulation, is in the standards world through accredited bodies like ours, you're required to update your standards within every five years. So if you don't get it right the first time, you need to make adjustments. You, you have to adjust them within five years, but you can adjust them quicker too. You can adjust them every year or two if you need to. So that's the great thing about standards. And one question we prepared is, what's a good standard? Is it one size fits all or it's a set of norm where most of the core products will fit in the norm or the norms, plural? Um, do you want to take this one? Yeah. <laughs> um, a good standard w would be one that, um, that offers compatibility, uh, like the of separate systems running like besides each other and 
organize them in a way that it's easily to hand handle them eh? because the main cause of uh, like not unfolding uh, for a real system or some solution that could be implemented is that it's hard and not convenient to, to get into the process of uh, running, especially of the returnable system itself, which, uh, the back, back logistics. And um, yeah, compatibility is one thing that we learned in the last years is uh, like the, the real issue uh, of like enforcing or um, empowering the systems to really get in place. Uh, and the, the, um, standardization is only one, one task on that way. Yeah? And standards also can get in the way uh, of uh, setting it up for uh, standards that, are, that don't fit for a solution that are already in place and then they will fail then, which is the issue that you, you mentioned about the startups that are doing it. We have a lot of startups in our association and uh, it's, it's a hard thing to fit in the right timing uh, and, and you can't wait for the standards coming. You get to get, got to get into place, and at the same time, uh, it can help you if you take part. But it's a hard time issue also. And we, as an association, we we're just starting to open the room to discuss about like the, the the fields of standardization and compatibility that is needed, and to invite all stakeholders from the whole we use cycle, uh, everyone, uh, from retailers to the system providers or the cleaning facilities, everyone, to take place because that's needed and it takes time. And that's the only way, I think, collaboration. Do you want to step in, Matthias? Yeah, I think also another point is a good standard would be a standard that makes it really easy for customers to use reusable packaging and to return it wherever they want it. And not to uh, not to um, first read read uh, two pages of instructions uh, to understand how this system works, but to to actually know okay, uh, I know reuse systems. I know this works like this. Now I'm in a new city. This is the same. This is the system works the same way that 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 in my hometown it works. So it's easy, and I can I can drop off my returnable packaging at 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 all the all the return points. L Laureen and then Claudette. Yes, uh, I was going to, to go on that topic too. Uh, it depends on the standard. There, some, sometimes it's a technical standard, like I said, for containers. And here, um, maybe the solution is, is all to go to one, one standard too. Because here it's about logistical efficiency. After, there is the standard, as you say, about the consumer, which is more about reference. Like, okay, I'm not going to get lost if I go in another region. I have like the same uh, user um, experience. And maybe there is a third one, which is more about reliability. Um, for instance, for what we said about cleaning facilities, the fact that, okay, no matter where I can be washed in, uh, in the territory, I would have the same guarantee. And it's more like, yes, reliability on that. It depends on the standard. I guess. Claudette? Yeah. All of that, I, I agree with all of it. It needs The system needs to be interoperable. It needs to guarantee safety. It needs to be easy for consumers. But the one thing that's also important is the standards need to leave a lot of room for innovation. So we can't prevent the entrepreneurs and the businesses from continuing to evolve their business. So the right standard is just the right amount of specificity. Standards should be innovation friendly. Yeah, they have to have a certain amount of specificity, but not too much that it prevents innovation because we're gonna need to continually innovate in this industry. I'm not sure if this mic works well. It seems okay, but uh, another question is the, the, the connection point between standards and the regulation. Should you regulate and put to forward a standard, or should you first do industry building of a standard, and then when it's quite established, quite welcome, maybe not 100%, but a decent uh, adoption rate, then you uh, step in with regulation to kick out to a full scale. What's your view on the, the link between standard on the one hand and regulation on the other hand? Um. <laughs> the French speaker. Yes. Um. <laughs> No, yes, in, in France, uh, there is no such standard ri written in the law for reuse. It's more about figured objectives. So, yes, they, they, it's not written like how and which, when, which mean we have to, to achieve that. So that's why we are taking the, the subject with the, with the reuse project that I presented earlier. So there is a need to define standard. So even if it's not uh, in the law, but I, I know that, for instance, in, in Germany, in the definition of what is a reusable packaging, for instance, it's written down that it has to be uh, associated with a disposit system. 
in France, it's, it's, not the, it's not the case. You can have like a reusable packaging without deposit, for instance. Not yet. <laughs> no, no, not yet. <laughs> I got it. Andre, <laughs> step in. Yeah, there, there's a, um, a good example of uh, yeah, how that went in a bad way in Germany uh, because we have the, um, the, the Dosen Fund, like the deposit for, uh, for metal containers uh, built up in the 1990s. Uh, and it was the, the target of that regulation was to uh, improve reusable systems to run properly. And they were already at close to 80% of, of usage uh, for beverage industry itself, for everything there. And yeah, the, it failed badly. Uh, it went down to 65% uh, because uh, the Dosen Fund itself was a higher, percentage, a higher rate of deposit. It was uh, high quality, uh, it's seen as high quality for the customer and the uh, producers took it and sold new products, high, high amount of uh, mar margin and it, it just went like through the, uh, through the roof uh, as, as, the, as a product itself and uh, yeah, burned down the rate of real reuse systems because it's single use deposit, yeah, which is important stuff to say. Yeah. And we still like suffer from this in Germany because we, we didn't like recover. We, we are not back on the 80% of usage, we are at 70%. Yeah. But it's still, it's, it's a regulation that made, uh, like, that didn't achieve the goal it was implemented for. And that's happening a lot also with reuse in the last year, 2023, as I mentioned before, for the offering of uh, we to go uh, reuse systems in all over Germany. We try to implement it and like force it to really happen and to grow. And the, the usage, usage, it was uh, raising a lot from 1.5% to 3.2. It's like nothing. Yeah? But the regulation was a place and took a lot of effort for other the other people there. But it's it's not only uh, it's not built for reality or the, for the systems running. It's just for an idea. And I think uh, the standardization and the process need need to come from the from the people working already on it, uh, and then get into in a good good way, good working way into regulation afterwards, and being like implemented maybe in a way that iteratively can yeah, follow and get to achieve a goal and then set the standard afterwards because industry knows where to go at the same time like uh, it needs to be forced in the right direction and that's a good thing like to have it combined yeah? but the standardization should not be regulative so you need a good standard and a good regulation or the regulation can actually get in the way of the good standard um, you are in Brussels you know regulation and how sausages get done. So what's, what's your view on regulation coming to the support of standards? <clears throat> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've been working on EU policies for a while, and I know that EU policies uh, do get the criticism of, of being too overly technical. Um, so that is obviously what policymakers want to avoid. Um, that, is, that is one part of the criticism of EU regulation, is uh, like you guys come up with so many technical specifications on each and everything, it is too much. So I do get, and, and we had a bit of uh, to struggle with that uh, for the packaging and packaging waste regulation where we would have wanted more prescriptive regulation, a regulation that says, okay, you reuse the packaging, has to be more durable, has to be more often reused, etc., etc. But there was a bit of a, of a, of a pushback, uh, partly from the industry, partly or for, for some single-use industries, from paper industries, from certain governments. Um, so it was, a, it was a tough battle and we didn't get a lot of what we wanted in the legislation. Um, but we are pushing and we are hoping that certain things we can fix in the standards. We can, we can prescribe by technical specifications how to test um, how durable the packaging has to be and how to test how, how or how to test whether whether this whether dur durability requirements uh, will be complied with um, so in the terms in uh, coming back to your question is it is it legislation first or standards first I'm afraid that uh, in the packaging sector uh, we had we had a very tough battle on legislation and we didn't get everything so uh, we hope for some some standards to to, to fix fix the fix the thing. 
Okay, and, and is standards for large company to get more efficiency or is it also for SMEs and innovative companies such as the one in the room? And also for uh, people in the room, if you have a startup, you can gain a lot of things from standard. Can you comment, Claudette, maybe on what small company, what big company can get from standards? Yeah, I think what big companies can get is... Um you know, so many multinationals operate across all jurisdictions, and if a one city wants to do a reuse program and, an, and another city has a different reuse program, it would be very hard for multinationals to, to uh, operate in all those different systems. So it's obvious why multinationals need standards so that it's easier for them to convert to reuse. Uh, for small and medium-sized businesses, one of the opportunities we see is the standards give small on, new entrepreneurs something to follow. So if, as entrepreneurs are trying to get investment, to be able to say, I'm following these standards and they're the same standards that my competitors and the big companies are also following, that gives some certainty to investors as well. So we see it as an economic opportunity, economic development opportunity to have standards in place as well. And, and I guess if they follow the right standard, they get also endorsed more easily by large clients, right? Right. It gives the entrepreneur, so a, for a wash hub um, anywhere in the world, if they're following a certain set of our, so for example, if they're following our standards, then if, if large companies all over the world, they need washing facilities. If, if Coke or Nestle or any company wants to have their bottles washed, if there's a set of standards that entrepreneurs can... They can say they're following the standards and then we know there's a relationship there that they can trust each other. And also on new fields, I guess you can establish your standards. Are you open on, on your different organization to listening to startups or small and medium sized company uh, to define a new standard in a field that's you know, open for technology, for technology disruption? I, I think as, uh, as Andre said, uh, it's about the expert of the of the sector to, to help to design those standards, so of course, yeah. You're open. Uh, it's, it's not only being open, but you can't focus on one group. Now, we've got a lot of startups in our association, but uh, the one thing that, that's, yeah, that's also the reason for this organization that we founded back then is uh, that you've got to le learn from established systems. Uh, and we, in Germany, we luckily do have a lot of experience, but like not learning from established systems would be the dumbest thing to do because they have standardization and they have compatibility with uh, at some places at least. And to get um, a knowledge about what, how is it, this is running, how that functions, uh, and in order to build up the new systems and also connect them in a proper way to build up, and that's the purpose of our organization, an ecosystem of reuse, like a bigger one that connects also the sectors like uh, e-commerce, like Horeca, like uh, prepackaged food, everything together, um, to at least learn from each other and like have it separately operated where it's needed, but at the same time seeing it as a reuse cycle of packaging that really really works then together and that means like doing the the combination uh, of both worlds the experts that were running this uh, the whole industry the whole time also the retailers who have knowledge uh, but invite also the new providers of systems the new uh, act stakeholders that try to implement innovation in a field where it's needed it's it's heavily needed and the EU regulation for all Europe doesn't really help the German field but uh, it, it helps uh, to build up like the discussion about how can we implement that and there's a big chance also for uh, like the infrastructure builder uh, the, we saw the retailers for food debt, for example and uh, to, to get that in place in a way that always also um, functions uh, over the border that, that's a big thing to accomplish huh? and it's, it's possible we're five minutes to the end, so I wanted to leave some room for questions, but maybe one last question for the panel and then to the, to the floor. Um, maybe one last success story or one last challenge where you may need the help of people in the room. Uh, any, any success story on building the right standards? Um, and uh, how can you have the help of everyone? Anyone? Maybe I go first. So I invite every interested economic operator to uh, participate in the upcoming discussions at the European standardization bodies to really sit around the table when these standards are being discussed and say 
hey guys, this 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 is really critical that we that we get that we get a uniform that, that we harmonize this aspect of the VU system. It's happening. It's going to happen right now. We have the regulation is adopted. Um, the commission will request standards that uh, provide a com um, that provide um, an assumption of conformity with the regulation. Um, and then the work will start. And uh, what, I'm, what I've been seeing in the last two or three years is that many uh, players of the, of the sectors are not really represented. Um, we have uh, people representing the industrial sector. We have people representing the glass manufacturers. But uh, takeaway packaging, for instance, I have not seen many at the discussions at SEN. And uh, I'd be really happy to see those and then to, to, to discuss how to make meaningful standards that really get the best out of these VU systems and, and achieve what we all want to achieve, meaning less, less resource use, less uh, carbon emissions, etc., etc.